the old tiger is forced to retreat. But with B1 now deep in Charger's territory, confrontation is inevitable. The old priest knows each tiger by name and can even recognize their individual calls. By the next morning, Charger's reign is over. He's lucky even to be alive. He takes cover in the thick undergrowth where he can nurse his wounds. Infection is just one of the dangers he now faces. B1 has not escaped entirely unhurt, but unlike his adversary, B1 is young and his wounds will quickly heal. The priest anoints himself, as he has done every day for decades. Hinduism places all forms of existence on the same wheel of fate. Whether it's a great and powerful dynasty or an individual tiger, its destiny is governed by karma and overseen by the trinity of gods in their many incarnations. A family of jackals has made a den under a thicket of bamboo. These cubs were born only a few weeks ago, but the den also holds another generation of jackals, older cubs that will suckle alongside their younger siblings. It is because of Bandalga's natural bounty that a pair of adult jackals can support two litters at the same time. And providing for the scavengers are the predators. With two hungry cubs to feed, Bachi has to kill more and more often. second successful litter. What looks like fun and games is in fact part of the cub's education. They need to learn fast and every day Bachi introduces the cubs to new challenges. What's a small step for Bachi is a giant leap for a youngster. Ow. Tiger cubs learn all their skills from observing their mother, and these first few months are critical. Ow. It's a steep learning curve, but tiger cubs, like all cats, have a habit of landing on their feet. Eventually, Bachi calls an end to the lessons, and her cubs obediently follow her for a well-deserved drink. It is water, above all, that ensures the regeneration of these jungles. And in late summer, after the monsoon rain, 
Bandauga turns a vibrant green. Water is a holy sacrament in many religions, including Hinduism. And in many ways, it dictates how the people here will live from one season to the next. The pilgrim's celebrations are coming to an end. They receive the priest's blessing and prepare to leave. Soon the old priest and the tigers will once again have Bandauga to themselves. Vishnu, the preserver of life, will sleep undisturbed for another year. With the last of the pilgrims gone, Samba deer come out to browse on the marshes. Their presence does not go unnoticed. With supreme confidence, B1 makes his way to the marsh. Tails raised and alarm calls sounding, the herds disappear into the long grasses. But B1 is not hunting today. He has come to reclaim a kill he hid the previous night. His wounds have now entirely healed, and the young tiger is a picture of health and formidable power. Very little that a tiger does ever goes unnoticed. Prey animals keep an eye on them out of concern for their own survival, and scavengers follow them in order to find scraps. So in Bandauga, B1 is usually the center of attention. He tries to hide the remains of his kill again, but doing so in broad daylight means it's doubtful there'll be much left for him and he may not even bother to return. Scavengers have been watching his every move and it is not long before they arrive on the scene. First are the crows followed by vultures, and then jackals. Together, they make up Bandauga's motley recycling team. Jackal runs the gauntlet of sharp beaks, hoping to grab enough food for his entire family. He is heavily outnumbered, but he stands his ground.